on July 14, 1789, over 7,000 citizens of France stormed into the Bastille in Paris. After killing all the soldiers, they dragged the governor of the Bastille through the streets, beat him up, and then decapitated him. His head was placed on a pike and paraded through the city. The revolution had begun. The French Revolution, starting with the storming of the Bastille and ending with the death of Maximilien Robespierre, spanned over five years. It tells the story of how the people decided to take their destiny into their own hands. Rebel against feudal authority and create a new republic. Many died. The streets of France were stained in blood. To understand what brought about the revolution, we need to go back in time. 1774 The ascension of King Louis the Sixteenth of the Bourbon family to the throne of France. Having become king at the tender age of twenty, he had no idea of how to manage a kingdom. King Louis was married to Mary Antoinette of Austria. Both Louis and Mary led an extravagant life in their palace at Versailles. They remained unaware of the pitiful situation of the people in their kingdom. In one day, the royal household used to consume food that could feed a person for a month. In addition to the expenditure made by the royal family, King Louis decided to support the American War of Independence in their war against Britain, France's old enemy. In doing this, he increased France's debt to over three billion livres. To King Louis, the answer was simple. Levi more taxes. The 18th century society in France was divided into three estates. The first estate consisted of the clergy. The second estate comprised of the nobility. And the third estate, which formed about 97% of the population, consisted of the merchants, officials, peasants, artisans, and servants. The clergy and nobility did not have to pay any taxes. So, it was the third estate that had to bear all the brunt of Louis' taxes. To be born as a member of the third estate during those times was a curse. They had to pay taxes to the king and state, taxes to the clergy called tithes, a direct tax called tile to the state, and taxes to their nobles as feudal dues from the peasants. Their taxes literally ran the state. However, not all members of the third estate were poor. A very small fraction called the middle class was also a part of the third estate. This group consisted of educated people such as teachers, lawyers, artisans and merchants. They started to question the privileges being enjoyed by the nobility. Jacques Rousseau, an eminent philosopher of the time, wrote against the doctrine of the divine and the absolute right of the king. He and others like him dreamt of a society that provided freedom, equality, and opportunity for everyone 
irrespective of which estate they were part of. Montesquieu, another philosopher of the time, actually wrote a book called The Spirit of the Laws, where he recommended that instead of the authority only being in the hands of the king, government authority needed to be divided into three wings the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. John Locke, yet another philosopher of that era, is known for his famous book, Two Treaties of Government, that sought to invalidate the principle of total power and authority of the king. So there was a growing sense of discontentment across all fractions of the third estate, right from the peasant to the merchant. All of them wanted change. In the midst of all these thoughts, the state decided in addition to the existing taxes to increase the price of bread. This was the last straw. People started fighting for bread. These bread riots, as they were called, increased to such an extent that anyone who hoarded bread was caught and killed. This led to a subsistence crisis, which means prime means of survival was threatened. This is caused due to reasons like bad harvest, epidemics and price hike, leading to a large gap between the rich and the poor. King Louis knew that the economy was in shambles. People were rioting on the streets. As a solution, he decided to convene the Estates General and put forth his proposal. However, as you will see later, this was just the beginning of a long list of problems that he was to face soon.